Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host Cam and today we're talking about how I made $700 in a day driving for Uber in my truck. That's right, you heard it. I made $700 in one day and I'm gonna tell you guys how I did it. If I can do it in a truck, you guys can do it definitely in a Prius or whatever you're driving. So stay tuned, you don't wanna miss out. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe or turn on all notifications so you don't miss out on when I drop one of my latest videos like today and be sure to hit that like button. It really helps my channel grow. I really do appreciate everybody that's watching and liking the videos. It really helps the channel grow. But like I was saying, there's no, there's no strings or anything like that. I literally built myself up to be able to make $700 in Uber. And a lot of you are thinking that that's not possible. I'm gonna tell you it 100% is possible. And it's pretty much is a story time of my, my life. I should put this in like maybe tips and tricks or my life story, but this will help you guys out. If you're looking to make extra income in the future, I know right now we're in a pan pandemic, but when everything starts to open up again, everything's gonna take off again. So you need to be ready. You need to have that advantage if you're thinking about Ubering or you were an Uber driver to maximize your time out on the road. I would say, I will say that if you're thinking about doing Uber Eats, Uber Eats is not bad if you don't if you don't like dealing with people, but at the end of the day, I liked making more money and I didn't have a problem with people in my, my vehicle at all. So um, like I was saying, I had a Ford F-250 and at the time, at Uber where I was, I was in Jacksonville, North Carolina because I was stationed there on the Marine base and on Camp Lejeune and they didn't allow, there wasn't a spot for you to put your truck in there. And so that didn't really stop me. There was an Uber meetup, not really a meetup, but there was like a representative there that at a local hotel and no one was there when I, when I drove in with my truck. And, and I got there, I talked to the dude and I was like, hey man, I got this nice F-250. And this is when I had $50,000 worth of debt. So I was desperate to drive and this was my nicer vehicle. My other one was pretty much trashed and I couldn't Uber in that. And, and I was really desperate to make money. And if you guys haven't seen that video of how I was in $50,000 worth of debt, I mentioned that I was Ubering and how I had good times Ubering. And this is, this is that time that I made 700 bucks. And so I went to the sales or the Uber rep and he came in, checked out my truck, the year, everything on it, the inside, outside, it was in great condition. And he put in an application for me to uh, be able to drive for Uber with my Ford F two fifty. I think it's okay. It's okay nowadays. Like you don't really have to. You don't have to put in the application to to do that. It's already on the app, so you can put your information in. By the time it wasn't, and so um, it was like a couple years ago. And so I got. I finally got that approved. All that, and I started driving. Now, if you think about gas and all that, it really wasn't that bad for me. I was getting about eighteen to 20 something miles per gallon. I mean, it's not great, it's not a Prius, you know, but I was happy with the result because it was a well-maintained truck and I kept up with it. So, um, and I started Ubering. So if you know anything about Jackson, North Carolina, it is small. Even like right now, it is up to 75,000 people. Now, if you're in a similar town, Uber is starting to catch on. Anybody can download the Uber app and start driving. So you just have to be ready and be available. And I think the other big thing, cause I had my Marine Corps job during the day and then I had weekends off. So I'd Uber at night and make my money. And I wouldn't make too much money um, during the weekdays, but on the weekends, I was starting to see two, $300, $400. Like, man, this is crazy. Just in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Cause we did have an airport there and I could drive people back and forth. So I was making some serious money. And this was before you could tip on the Uber app. And so it was really, really hard to get tips back then. So you really had to do something special to get a tip. And I would say that's my, my first point in all of this is make sure you don't have to have a Ford F-250, but have a well-maintained vehicle and keep things in the vehicle. And so what I mean by that, so keep it maintained, but also I always had water in a cooler. I always had some candy in there and I had some cologne and perfume, like the little ones in there that they could take if they wanted. And it's whatever you want to keep in there. Don't make it like too cluttered, 
but have some stuff in there. So when they come in, they're like, man, I want to get you, you know, next time and, and stuff like that. And I had that happen several times where here's another key uh, trick. And I started doing it myself. I'm like, hey, if you guys enjoyed this, just send me like a text because your Uber number is on the Uber app. And so if somebody loses something, they can hit you up or call you or text you, whatever. And so people would hit me up. And the first person that ever did, I was like, I don't know, you could call people on this thing. But somebody called me and was like, hey, we're going to be leaving in like 15 minutes. Can you come pick us up at the place you dropped us off? And so I would go there. And this really helps if it's a slow night or it's not popping. I would go there if I was in the area. And if I wasn't, I'd be like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not in the area. But I would pick them a drive right next to them and they would hit the Uber app and I would pick them up. I did that several times. So I would also just tell people like, hey, if you're dropping them off, like, hey, if you want me to come pick you up later, let me know. Um, text me if I'm in the area, I'll come pick you up and you can, uh, you know, get a ride with me, which is awesome. You always want to use the Uber app because they have insurance on it when you're driving and you definitely don't want to be liable if somebody's in your car and something happens and you're not using the Uber app. I will say that. Make sure you make sure you click that Uber app and they get a ride with you. So really, it depends on desperation. And so this is point number two. Maybe some of you guys aren't as desperate, but for me, I was extremely desperate. And how desperate are you to get rides? And that goes into my point is location so desperation and location so we i didn't really plan this out but in jacksonville north carolina there was a b-dubs texas roadhouse red lobster uh, a lot of other chilies walmart all kinds of places right next to our apartment like half either half a mile um, from our my apartment or in between there and so what i would do is at night you know how you get that that little ring and it makes that sound and stuff like that. I would miss it most of the time if I didn't have my earbud in. So what I would do is I would keep an earbud in at night. Um, whatever I was doing, I would probably go to bed early-ish to, to um, have it plugged into my phone. And whenever I get a ring, accept it really didn't matter to me um, who it was. I would just accept it, go drive, get in my truck and drive real quick and go pick them up. I never got a complaint, always worked out for me. So always have that earbud in and I mean, really did work for me. If you do not live, I think that sucks. If you do not live in a great location, you're going to have to, and if you're first starting out, my tip would be to you drive around for a little bit, park in a couple locations for an hour or so. If it's not working after an hour, find another location and just keep doing that for like a week or so till you find out a good groove of like, hey, this is where people are going. This is where people aren't going. Or people requesting for Uber rides. Because some people request the Uber at the same spot all the time. So I had my regulars. And then my last tip. I don't think I'm going really in order. I'll try to, you know, put something at the bottom of this screen. Of what which one I'm in order with. But is drive on holidays and weekends. And change your location. Especially if you're in a small town. So this was July 4th. This day that I decided to drive. And we're going to get into the story because I'm sure you guys are interested, interested in it. I went to Emerald Isles, which is about an hour from Jacksonville, North Carolina. It's an hour uh, north and some change. And so I went up there for July 4th. My wife had to work a shift at B-dubs anyway, so we were both working. I went there and I just worked. I went there early in the morning, worked all day all night and I was just killing it. I've been to Emerald Isles before. It's a good spot if you guys are in North Carolina to find a good place to Uber. And I went all day, all night, made 700 bucks. But there was a couple key things that you gotta keep in mind there when you're doing that is I got really, it was luck and it was being there at the right time. So everybody else that, there was like a couple other drivers that drove Emerald Isles but they were out drinking and I knew that because they went to the local bars and that's where, you know, you would go to hang out with the other Uber drivers while you're waiting for rides and stuff. And I mean, you wouldn't drink, obviously, but they were completely passive. So I know they weren't driving tonight and I knew that I was going to make bank. And I think the biggest thing that helped me out is somebody wanted me to drive them from Emerald Isles to Wilmington. And that was about an hour and 40 minutes away, but it was in the middle. So you have... Um, Emerald Isles here, Wilmington right here, and then 
Jacksonville, North Carolina in the middle. So I would drive him all the way down. Wilmington's still popping at this time of night. And this is probably halfway through the night. And no one else would take, like, absolutely no one else would take them, take him. And there was really nobody else driving. I was just like, I was kind of hesitant at first. I was like, man, I don't know if I can do that because I don't know. Because um, it's really popping in my eyes right now. And he's just like, man, I will pay you, pay your gas and all this other stuff. And so if you're, if somebody is willing to do that, because you don't know if they're going to tip you. And that's definitely worth a tip, especially somebody that's not, um, that doesn't tip usually. And he paid for my gas, which was, I think a Philip was 60 bucks at the time and would get me through several hours of driving and took him down there. I think I made what, like two something on that trip, maybe 300 bucks, somewhere around there. So don't be afraid to take somebody either out of state. I don't know how the laws work out of state. That might, you know, be kind of, you might want to look that up, but across the state, I would say, that's pretty safe, but take them across the state, drive, and I drove in Wilmington, Wilmington for like t- until two or three, finished up making seven hundred bucks, and then drove home. And that's that's how I made seven hundred bucks on Uber, Uber using my my F two fifty, and that's with the gas taken out and everything, because people were tipping like crazy. Like there's another situation that I had where there's this group of people they had like uh, ten. 10 people and I can only take one group and they're like, hey man, we really like your truck and you go pick up the other group. And the way Uber works, they're 20, like 20 minutes away. You, I mean, you guys know this, you pick them up, you go to the location, you, you get another Uber ride from the closest person. They're like, hey, we'll pay you like 40, 50 bucks, whatever it was to go pick them back up, plus the Uber fare. And that's what I did. So don't be afraid to be like, don't be rude about it, but just be like, hey man, I can't really do that. I got it's going to cost me more gas to go that way and, and all that. And I would, having a, a Ford F-250 did help me. I did end up selling my F-250, but man, I got some work out of that thing. And that's something I would keep in mind if you're buying your next vehicle in cash. Uh, think about other ways to utilize it for Uber. Because I don't know if I'll ever stop Uber because I, I, uh, I loved it. Oh, pro tip. This is my last tip and then I'm out of here. Always, if you're driving late at night, because that's where the money is, like 2, 3, 3 a.m., that's where, it, you know, the bars are closing. Make sure to have a giant steel bucket, like big one. Always kept one in the back of my truck bed. So just in case I, I got some guys that were drunk, I would throw it in there. And if they need to throw up, they could throw up right into a garbage bag in my steel little bucket and no one had a problem with it because they were all drunk and they're like, you know, possibly could throw up. I only had one person throw up in my truck and it went in the steel bucket and it was all great. Fantastic. It worked. So pro tip, if you're going to drive late at night. And also, I didn't have a camera at the time, but a Willy, Uber really wasn't that crazy back then. Now, I feel like you need a camera. If I drove again nowadays, I would have a camera set up, lo- locked into my uh, my truck or my car, wherever I was, and make sure to record because people are crazy. I mean, every people are crazy when they're drunk, no matter what. But a lot of people treat Uber like it's their own car um, sometimes, and I don't know. But anyways, that concludes this episode. How I made seven hundred dollars on Uber in my truck in a day. I hope you guys found this information I hope uh, helpful if you are trying to drive with Uber or you are new or you are trying to get back at it. Don't be discouraged. Um, work those late nights. Keep that earbud in. I would, you know, definitely, you can find some good day rides too if you live in a big city, but man, you got to make that money. I, a legit 700 bucks. Um, it was, it was awesome. It was, it was crazy. And that wasn't including the tips because the tips I used for gas and, and stuff. So I made up big time. But anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you're new. And stay classy. I'll see you next time on another episode. Peace.